Hi, I'm Peter Jones, Chartered Surveyor, Author and Property Investor, and this is the Progressive Property Podcast. And I'm delighted today to be joined by Mark Nicholson. Hi, Mark. Good Hi, to see you. Hi, Peter. How are you doing, right? And it's a little bit unusual today because we're not in the usual setting, the studio at Peterborough. We're actually in central London, in Wimpole Street, in some very fancy offices. And rightly so, because I've got a very special guest. <laughs> so good to see you, Mark. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, good, good. I'm a little bit drenched through. It's torrents of rain outside, so uh, yeah, but I'm, I, it's nice and warm in here. Well, it's so typical I'm... summer weather, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the UK. Mm. So, Mark, I've seen you around Progressive. Mm-hmm. You've been part of the community at Progressive for quite some time. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you come across Progressive? So, um, I, uh, well, my dad started in property about 98. I joined him a lot, long, a lot further on after that. But it was actually 2009 when I met Rob Moore for the first time. I was at an Andy Harrington event called yeah. Power to Achieve. And Rob was speaking at that. At the time, it was very difficult to get mortgages. And uh, the first thing Rob said is, you don't need to get a mortgage. You know, you can joint venture with people, you can do so many other things. So straight away, it was really interesting. Um, enough so to commit to the masterclass. And, um, and go, we went on from there, really. And VIP afterwards? Yeah, well, straight away with the masterclass, it was such... Uh, such an overwhelm of information, so many different mm. things to do. Mm. And although it was all very interesting and there was a great community of people, I knew that I was going to need to follow up. I knew I was going to need the accountability. And so I joined the VIP. Uh, first year went well. I ended up doing it three years, three years in a row. Three years. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 Not ever knowing that it was eventually going to lead you having a cameo role on TV, which we'll come back to <laughs> yeah. in, in a moment, a role with your dad. So your dad was doing property, mm-hmm. and he, he encouraged you into property? Were you, did, were you interested as a kid no. watching him doing it? Do you know what? No. As I said, like, 98, uh, he bought, my, when my grand died, she left some inheritance money, he bought a couple of flats in Newham, um, which is an investment area for us, Stratford. And um, yeah, at the time I wasn't interested in property at all. Uh, my mum was a bit fearful, oh God, what's he done? That sort of thing, you know? Um, I was far too busy DJing. Uh, all right. every, every weekend I was at Ministry of Sound DJing at other nightclubs. Oh, wow. um, and that was really, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to be a professional DJ really. Yeah. You know, that was my desire. That was probably, probably the limit of my desire at that point. Mm. Right. So your dad, he started in property, not as an accidental landlord, but it was obviously a very part-time thing mm. after your, your nan died yeah. and, and left a bit of finance. And East London, interesting gold mine area, because mm. are you, you're based on, in, on the south coast, aren't you? No, no, uh, we've got a portfolio in uh, uh, South End. Okay. So that might be where you've got that from. Right. Uh, I, um, Dad grew up in Loughton in Essex. Well, I, okay. sorry, he didn't, I did, uh, yeah. in Epping Forest. Yeah. Um, and uh, the reason for Stratford, um, really, I think he just went to some local agents and they advised Stratford. And um, he was very lucky that then the Olympics got announced, you mm. know, sometime after. Mm. Uh, up and coming is the expression, yes. you know. Yeah. So, but he, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that really. Okay. Mm. So what, what was his main strategy when he started? Um, well, when he started, it was literally a case of going to an estate agent, you know, saying, I want to buy a couple of places. Not in, he's a chartered civil engineer by profession. Mm. Oh, he was. He's a full-time investor now. Mm. Um, and he uh, let it and forget it is the phrase from yes. the TV show. Yes. And it really was that. You know, he wanted to give his money to an agency and have them do. You know, and um, it worked from a capital growth perspective perspective it really Mm. worked. Mm. Um, What we noticed though is when times got a bit tougher in the rental market, uh, the neglect on the stock uh, from the local agents meant that, you know, uh, voids were a big issue for us. All right, okay, okay. So he started off by doing single buy-to-lets, single buy-to-lets, is that still your principal strategy? No, we've, uh, we've really moved away from that. Um, reason being, certainly central London, uh, prices keep going up and up and up. Rents aren't going, despite what you'd hear in the media, mm. rents aren't going up anywhere near what people say mm. they are. Mm. And uh, the yields have really dropped. 
So uh, whereas you used to be get, able to get like an 8% yield on a single let, now you're lucky to get five mm. in, in even areas like Ilford, which is a good investment area. Mm. So what are you doing now then? So now um, we're, we're buying HMOs, uh, okay. buying HMOs in uh, South End. That's been quite good for us. Um, and in London, uh, we've been doing a lot more, uh, well, we're starting to do service departments. Okay, yeah. how's that going? Um, yeah, really well, really well. We, um, uh, we did Paul Smith's course mm -hmm. um, under recommendation of the McBains, who are right. our friends from South End. Yes, of course. Um, uh, a year prior, they said, oh, you ought to get into service departments, Mark. And I, I thought a service department was basically an HMO, but with linen, you know. Yes. <laughs> I didn't realise it was like a short stay thing. Um, a year later, they were already making 10 grand a month out of it. And yeah. we were like, oh, whoops, we've missed a trick. Uh, met Paul, uh, went on to do his mastermind. Uh, we're now up to, last count, 23 service departments. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and well, do, you, do you own all those or are they rent to rent or a mixture? A real mixture. Mm. So dad's ones, we started to flip to uh, SA from buy to let. Okay. Uh, they've been performing really well. Uh, they're nicely clustered as well. Um, and then we had people obviously come up to us and say, yeah, can you do the same with ours? And mm. we said, yeah. Mm. Um, and more recently, uh, we've been taking floors in big sky rise buildings in uh, like around that sort of area, East London, mm. and doing those on a rent to rent basis. Um, and we've also been uh, meeting with investors and sort of, if you like, packaging those up. So mm. we manage them, mm. but they're essentially got control of the rent to rent, and that's been working really well for us right. as well. Right, so sort of like an element of deal packaging as well. Yeah, a mixture of stuff, really. Mm. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. And presumably that's got you over the hiccup of the voids. Oh, well, that, that went ages ago, um, the, because uh, the, the voids issue was really down to the local agents mm. and... You know, the fact that you just give your keys to somebody and just hope the rent comes in every month. Mm. That's, and, you know, they, they can be fairly complacent. Mm. Um, when I joined Dad, and I'll t probably, I guess we talk about that a bit more in detail in a bit minute, but um, when I joined him, um, I really, really, my motivation to gut them do them up in a really good condition and start self-managing. Mm. Uh, that's when we managed to reduce the voids. Uh, right. Now we, you don't really experience voids in East London. Right, okay. So let's talk about you yeah. and, and your dad and working okay. with your dad. So back in 2009, he, mm -hmm. he took you to a conference. You saw, oh, I took him. You took him. You, yeah. saw, you saw Mr. Moore, Rob Moore himself. Mm -hmm. That inspired you and you went through the process and the courses and you ended up working with your dad. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. How was it working with your dad? Right, so yeah, it's, it's always been a challenge. We get on really, really well. I'm sure you can see from the TV show though, mm. we do butt heads occasionally. Yes. Uh, we're always on the same page, but it takes a while to get there. You know, um, we're, very, we're very different characteristic types. Which you is know. good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, One of the things we teach at uh, Progressive. Yeah, yeah, like he's very detail-based, uh, very literal, mm. whereas I'm sort of more lateral and like to see the, the bigger picture. The mm. um, uh, reason I joined Dad actually was um, I had an interest, before 2009, I did have an interest in property. I'd started to get an interest. Mm. Um, I'd done various, before I did Progressive, I'd done various other trainings with other people. It's okay, we won't, won't hold that against you. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, very, you know, mix, mixed reviews, but ultimately led to a, a good goal. It's all aggregated mm. in, a, yeah. in, a, in a success. Um, but I was pretty stubborn back then, and I wanted to do it on my own. Mm. I, I, um, I, there's this expression, bank of mum and dad, mm. and from my own ego and my own sort of masculinity, I didn't want to just be like, if you like, having pocket money off my dad for the rest of my life. Mm. So it was really a case of how can I be successful in my own right? Mm. Um, and one of the things I learned through this experience of working with my dad and coming in with dad is um, it's, not, it's not a bad thing, you know, to be codependent, you mm. know. Um, actually, uh, Dad had a bit of a health scare. Um, uh, it was a misdiagnosis. Well, I was, I was out on my birthday. Um, 
when was it? So it would have been my 29th birthday, around then, that sort of age. Mm. And, um, you know, by then I was working in sales. I was relatively successful. I'd gone out to a nice meal in Clerkenwell. Mum and dad looked completely miserable. And I mm. go, well, why are you looking miserable? Mm. And mum goes to me, well, your dad's got prostate cancer. Oh dear, right. Yeah. And the first thing I thought was, well, that's my birthday ruined. You know, because, because that, that's how arrogant I was back then. You know, I was kind of like, well, you know, I was all about myself. Um, then when I stopped and thought about it, I realised that at that age, I knew how to be self-sufficient, but I didn't have a clue what it would be to actually look after a family. Mm. Um, turns out, actually, and it's important to say this at this point, it was a misdiagnosis. Good. Um, and he had, had to have a nasty operation. He's obviously, he's absolutely fine now. But it was it was... You know, people talk about the, um, the moment you wake up. Sure. You know, and that was definitely my moment. And I went down from, I spoke to my boss, who was very good, uh, went down to a four-day week, um, started working Fridays with Dad in a business, mm. and very quickly got obsessed with property to the right. point where, uh, in my day job, the minute the boss went out of the room, I'd be on right move. <laughs> you know, it was really yes. like that. Yes. And uh, it got to a point where um, I knew I couldn't stay there anymore. Um, there was an ultimatum on the horizon. I spoke to Dad. At the time, I said to him, look, if you can pay me two grand a month, then I can come and work with you full time. And mm. I, I promise I'll make that back. Um, he said yes. So, uh, I know in Progressive, we call it uh, sacking your boss. Yes. So, I had the opportunity to sack my boss. Yes. That's pretty unfair, actually, because um, he's an entrepreneur himself, my boss, and uh, the boss at the time. And if he hadn't have given me that break, if he hadn't have given me that four-day week, then I may not be here now. Yeah. You know, I may still be in some sales job, you know, fighting uh, every day and, you know, getting on a train every day and finding it very unpleasant, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, that is brilliant, isn't it? And sometimes we mm. get asked, how do you actually transition out of your full-time job into property? Mm. And maybe part of the answer is find out how understanding your boss is. Yeah, ob obviously work for you. Mm. So then you went to work with your dad full time. Yeah. So what were you doing at that point? Was this still when you were doing the buy to lets, or had you moved into serviced accommodation? Well, um, we we got to the point two thousand and nine. Uh, we were pretty pretty desperate, actually. Well, this is when you weren't finding the mortgages. Well, yeah. So we, we were in it, despite my arrogance, uh, we were in a recession um, and couldn't get mortgages. Uh, we'd done the master, well, we'd done the master class. We started the VIP. Uh, we were learning all of the strategies. You know, maybe we'll try options. You know, mm, mm. maybe we'll try. We bought uh, we bought a portfolio in Hull up in uh, oh, up right. in the north. You know, yeah. because we thought oh, we'll get low uh, high yielding, low investment properties. Yeah. Um, uh, we we were trying everything, rent to rents. We 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 did leaflets and uh, we will buy your house for cash, all yes. that sort of stuff. Yeah. I remember one time. Uh, Dad said, oh, I'll stop, start at the top of the road, you start at the bottom of the road, and we'll meet in the middle. Yes. Uh, when, we, when we met in the middle, uh, his hand was actually pumping with blood. Oh, no. And uh, he'd been bitten by a dog when oh, he'd no. put his... Uh, and I, uh, again, I just thought, well, I'm glad I started at that end of the road, yeah. you know? Do you know, weirdly, mm. the very same thing, sorry to jump yeah. in, but the That's very, fine, great, very yeah. same thing happened to me yeah. when I was out leafleting with my son. Mm. So there we are. Anybody who's listening, there's a lesson there. Yeah. yeah. Watch your fingers. Dogs or, do get them. Or you, if you if you really want to do it right now, I'd rather do other strategies. But Absolutely. if you really want to do that, get one of those windscreen uh, things and post them through That's like right. that. Yeah, but, scraper. Yeah. But uh, joking aside, we we were getting we were desperate. Like when we met Rod Moore, we were desperate. And I remember saying to him, "Look, thank you because well, why, why were you desperate? Because the cash flow wasn't the, there. Yeah. Or, well, or? Uh, actually, not only uh, mortgages were difficult. Yeah. Dad was paying me two grand a month. Yeah. Um, and his consultancy work in civil engineering, uh, that was drying up. Because of the recession, mm. presumably. So uh, he, wasn't paying, he wasn't in a position to pay himself. Right. Well, he was having to pay himself out of the portfolio. Yeah. He was having to pay me. And um, yeah, he was eating into capital. And um, it was a really scary time. Okay. Really scary. Okay. So how did you turn that around? Do you know what? And this is maybe a bit of advice for some people as well. Mm. You know, keep going, mm. keep going, um, just keep keep pushing, and eventually you'll get momentum. Um, we just we just pushed and pushed and pushed, 
And um, actually, everything we learned back then has really, really stuck with me. Mm. Um, we, we, we started, we, we got the portfolio in Hull, which started to turn a bit of a profit. Have you still got that, by the we way? We have still got it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, uh, really, what the break was for us um, was in 2012, uh, the Olympics was announced. Mm. Dad actually got quite a big project on the Olympics mm. and uh, that put some more money in the bank. Yeah. Um, off the back of that, uh, we then set up a business. Um, uh, it was actually, we were, uh, we were accountable for all the traffic management solutions in the London boroughs. All right. So uh, very unpopular at the time because we were doing like virtual ver permit zones and enforcing. So I was kind of like a glorified traffic warden. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were, do we were doing that. Um, and after that, we tried to turn that into a business, but yeah. it, it, for some reason it didn't work. Okay. Um, and uh, that's when we really decided, 2012, look, what are we doing? Why mm. don't we just go back into property full time? Mm. Mm. The market's recovered. Um, we, we've blinked and suddenly everything we did buy back then has all gone up in value. Okay. You know, rents are picking up. Yeah. Um, we've, we're, we're experienced now. Let's just crack on, you know? So it was sort of those, those years, mm. as I say, that winter period was really a time where we could um, mm learn and buy, mm. build a sound foundation. So it didn't happen overnight. No. Yeah. Okay, so when you decided to crack on, what did cracking on actually mean to you at that point? Okay, so at that point it was still single lets yep. and uh, we were buying below market value. And the reason is um, uh, the, it was a rising market um, and we'd uh, got some really good relationships with local agents. Mm. They knew that we were serious, we could turn a deal around very quickly um, so um, there was what, call, what was called a, a distressed sale, or okay. it probably is still a distressed sale, where um, a, a buyer comes in, maybe uh, yeah, but a buyer comes in and they offer asking price, very confident. Um, after about a period of six months, it becomes very clear that they're not going to get the mortgage, yeah. or they're not professional enough to be able to do the conveyancing. By this time, the vendors really agitated and so mm. is the estate agent. Mm. Um, so they just would say to the vendor, look, Peter and Mark, they're solid, why not let them buy your property? Mm. And um, our offer price would be what the guy paid six months ago, mm. which by then was a significant difference. You because know? the prices have gone up mm. so much. And then by the time we complete, um, I think we bought about six properties in 2013 and each of them made 80 grand profit. Fantastic. Mm. I know that is a really interesting point, Mark, because even nowadays, a lot of investors, particularly those who are based in London, are questioning whether you can find BMVs. Mm. They're out there, aren't they? All the deals are out there if you just yeah. get the rapport and the relationship with the agents, mm. which you clearly had. Yeah, everyone, everyone sort of get, well, it back, back when I learned, people were really stuck around this figure of 25% BMV. Yeah. And it was all around these sort of daylight bridging tactics and all this sort of stuff. Mm. Whereas um, what I would say is I've turned down a lot of really decent properties because I was getting maybe 15% BMV, you know? Mm. Mm. And actually, if it's robust, my advice is if it's robust and it works, mm. certainly in London where mm. you've got an appreciating market, mm. you know, just buy decent bits of stock. Yes. You know, buy decent pieces of stock, yeah. Yeah, don't get too hung up on the discount because mm. it's yeah. going to appreciate in time anyway, No, ho hopefully so. Yeah. And buy good, uh, at the end of the day, you're buying good quality assets. Yeah, mm. yeah. Brilliant, so 2013 you bought six properties like that mm -hmm. and that gave you a bit more momentum. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Right, well, by then we were really up and running. Um, so our letting agency, Executive Lettings, was growing and growing. Um, as Dad's tenants were moving out, uh, we were refurbishing, uh, putting new professional tenants in. Uh, we were managing for other people. Uh, we re uh, I, I use the three R's, so uh, refurb, refinance, reinvest. Yep. And I, uh, we were just doing that. We were sort of, uh, Dad and I call it whacking the pinata, <laughs> where we have this big Excel <laughs> spreadsheet, you know, and we look, yes. you know, what properties are due for renewal on the mortgage. Um, actually, now we've moved it all into a, a Metro Bank mortgage, so it's all consolidated, okay. which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but back then, it was kind of like each one, when it comes up for renewal, take a bit of money out, 
respend it. Yeah. And we were just using that model to grow and grow and grow yeah. um, until we got to a point where, as I said at the beginning of the conversation, buying a single let, yes. it, uh, we couldn't make the numbers stack up. You okay. know, with the, with the mortgage and the level of the rent, and especially now with all the, uh, the new tax implications, mm. et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it's just um, bit, bit for us, it, yeah, yeah. It, certainly in central London, it wasn't working for us. Okay. So the letting agency, is that the letting agency that you formed? Yes. Oh, okay. So at what point did you form the letting agency? Um, this is, that's quite interesting. We originally created it to do rent to rent, and that was probably 2010. 2010, 11-ish, okay. I can't remember. Um, and uh, we were gonna do, yeah, we, executive lettings, the whole point was corporate lets, executive lets, you know, so we mm. were gonna go out and do rent to rent on multi lets, mm. and, um, and that was gonna be our stance, professional tenants. Mm. Um, and we, by the time we got to the point where we could have done that, actually we had money in the bank mm. so instead we just went back to what we were doing mm. uh, we shelved that company um, but then back in i'm getting a bit muddled up with all the, the years but mm. it's sort of it's mm. around that time mm. you know mm. but then later on uh, we definitely we brought that off the shelf and used that to manage dad's own stock yeah and also manage other people's stock so that would have been a, around this sort of 2013 14 period uh, right. so yeah from from about i'd say from about maybe from about 50 15 it was sort of mm. up and running like mm. as an official company okay yeah okay and still running oh yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah. so a useful source of income on the side mm -hmm. and very useful to keep all of your management in-house so yeah you can keep a, a proper eye on the properties mm. and we've since grown that brand and we've created another company called executive stays mm. and that is where we uh, manage the service departments from yeah so essentially we've got three different business property businesses if you like we've got the uh, executive lettings yeah. executive stays and then there's nicholson property mm. which is me and dad and that's kind of like more the investing side of things a bit of consultancy work that sort of stuff okay and you got your wish you went in and started refurbishing your dad's properties yeah as you saw from the program actually you know mm. like um it was always my intention to gut and refit that one yeah. and you saw dad's resistance to it and uh, i get i get his points mm. um uh, I want to put on record that um, that's always been the case. Ever since I started with him, it's been, you know, I've, I've really had to, but then having said that, you know, the, this is his livelihood. This is his, yeah. this is his portfolio, you know, and I, I, I'd quite happily just spend 10 grand here, 10 mm. grand there, you know, mm. just, just enhancing mm. the stock, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, let's talk about the programme. Okay. Because there may be listeners who haven't actually seen it yet. The week the landlord moved in, mm. And you and your dad yeah. were invited to move into one of your tenants' properties for a mm -hmm. week and to live on their budget of mm. £80 a week or whatever it was. I can't remember the exact figure. Oh, but I think it was less than that. I think more like 56 Yeah, well, yeah. whatever was left yeah. over from their monies once they'd paid the rent. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's see right. see whether you could live yeah. on that. So you were texted, I get the impression from the programme, a little while before you had to leave the house mm -hmm. to actually go and... They told you at the very last minute which property you were moving into. Yeah. So you can like turned up at this surprise property <coughs> mm. and you hadn't seen it for a while. Yeah. And there's the whole scene of you arriving and going through the front door and acquainting yourself with the property. Yeah. How did that feel? Oh, well, how, how do you think it felt? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm assuming um, that the BBC had found a property where... Well, they, yeah, so they then... Could they needle you a bit. Um, well, I, I, I went into the programme with my eyes open. I knew they wanted a story. So uh, they weren't going to choose, like, one of the executive apartments. That was my, was my uh, uh, assumption. Yes. Um, It'd be a bit boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, you know, so, <laughs> so uh, I know. Um, but they did, obviously, audit our stock... And they found the one which was going to be the most interesting storyline. Yeah. Um, I uh, went right in the run up to the program. Uh, my mum was very concerned. Oh, you shouldn't be doing this. You know, you're going to. It's going to be really bad for you. Your profile, etc. Um, uh, Dad was fine with it. I had some concerns, but mm. um, I thought that um, you know, if I'm going to watch this program on the telly, 
uh, it might as well be me in it, you yes. know. Yeah. Um, but but then when in answering your question, walking through that door, suddenly I thought, oh, I won't swear, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I just thought like, oh oh dear, yeah. uh, what of. They said it wasn't oh dear. Yeah. Substitute that for yeah. something And it was stronger. like suddenly, because you've got the cameras in your face, you've got this smell of, uh, on the programme, it may, uh, you know, it's, uh, the, the assum- uh, it, it looks like the smells of the mould. Mm. Actually, it's a dog wee was the main smell. Oh, right. um, and I thought, why does it smell of dog wee in here? And then I thought, oh, I remember. I said she could have a dog. You know, oh, okay. so, so it was my fault. Yeah. Um, and, um, and yeah, it just hit me. The, the nation's going to see this. Yes. And I pride myself on being a sophisticated investor who's got his own agency and I manage stock, right? Yes. And this is what people are seeing. Yes. You know, and suddenly I thought, wow, this, you know, I've made a real mistake here. And did I, you? Did you? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, because how, how, firstly, how did the BBC actually get in touch with you and choose you to be one of their guinea pigs? Or victims, depending on how you want to um, it. Well, uh, I, I just want to—I uh, just want to make clear. At that moment, yeah. I thought I'd made a mistake. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was a mistake going in. Mm. I don't think it's a mistake now. No, I'm we'll, very we'll, happy. We'll, yeah, and we'll come to that. And I think yeah, you actually sure. came out of it pretty well, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah. But um, how, so, but how, how did they find you in the first place? So, um, a Facebook friend of mine um, messaged me and said, "By the way, uh, this TV production company are doing a, a show about land." It was really concept stage at that point. Mm. Mm. Um, this is probably about 18 months ago, mm. um, longer than that actually. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, there was an email address there. I sent a very brief paragraph on myself and dad, expected to hear nothing. The next day the phone rings and before I knew it, um, they're in my mum and dad's house with me and dad interviewing us mm. and putting together what they call it is a taster tape, mm. um, which is kind of like a five minute uh, snapshot of different pieces and they were going to use that to sell to the networks. Mm. So this was before the program had actually been commissioned. Mm. Um, so, uh, and, at, and at that point there was no real storyline. Mm. They kind of had an idea that, you know, it might be uh, one of these sort of, you know, life swap kind of things, uh, maybe, you know, yeah, that sort of bo- undercover mm. boss kind of vibe, mm. you know, but there was no real, uh, it wasn't, it was very early days, very early mm. days, yeah. Okay, but your mum had some reservations, but mm-hmm. you were sort of going in with your eyes open, but there must have been the concern, because the media generally mm. don't portray investors and buyers yeah. and landlords in a terribly good light, do they? Well, I, I, I would assume you've seen the Guardian uh, article that went out about the show. Have you, did you see I that? I haven't actually, no time Oh, right, that. okay. Yeah. So uh, before it aired, um, the, the same week it aired, uh, the Guardian did, uh, in their money section, they did a piece on the show. Yeah. And it was really, um, because uh, if you've seen the show, um, certainly, the first five minutes, uh, they, they, all, every, all of the all of the shows seem to have a have a similar theme, which is like at the beginning, you know, it's kind of like oh, this this rich landlord yes. who doesn't really care, he's a bit disassociated. Then he has a journey, and then he comes to some realization. This article was all just about that first five minute section of the yes. thing, and it basically painted us all to be criminals, really, yes. and absolute yeah, like hideous people. And, um, and it stirred up a bit of a hornet's nest within the forums and a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, my word, what have these landlords done doing this thing? Um, and yeah, that's typical of the media really. Um, it's a very, very narrow view on, on the thing, you know. Um, so you walk through the front door and there's the smell of dog wee. Yeah. And you're thinking, crikey, have I done the right thing? And then obviously you and your dad, under the terms of your contract, had to live in this flat. And the lady had obviously not told you of various repairs mm. that needed doing. And you were discovering that as you went around the property. And the, they were filming you and your dad and how mm. you interacted as you found out what had happened yeah, to the yeah, property. Yeah. So, so tell, tell me about that. How, did that. how did that all feel? And were you there thinking, oh my word, what are we going to do for the week? And how's this yeah, going to play so out? Yeah, so it really was a case of maybe I've made a mistake, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe coming on this wasn't a good idea. Um, but then very quickly, I got the, like dad, if you've seen the programme, 
Um, he was very much, how's Linda, Li, well, the, the tenant, yeah. how is she, Matt, well, Linda, we, yeah. we know the name of the yeah. tenants on the telly, yeah. um, you know, what, why she allowed it to get into this state, and he was really cross about that. Yes. Whereas with me, I knew it was very important to get a sense of ownership, you know, this has happened on my watch, Yes. Uh, I'm accountable for this, if I put myself as accountable, then I can actually find a solution and I can mm. actually bring the thing forward. Okay. So it was very much, very quickly, okay, you're 100% ownership. We are where we are. We're in this rabbit hole. Mm. Let's find a way out, you mm. know? And so that was, that was how I felt about the whole thing. Okay. And were you surprised at the condition of the property? I mean, it wasn't in a terrible state, but there were obviously bits and pieces that needed doing. Um, I was surprised because whenever I'd spoken to the tenant on the phone, yes. um, so, yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine, you know. And we, looking back, we should have done regular checks. Mm. And the re, well, I can't make excuses for why we didn't, other than uh, this was actually one of those properties that we bought, you know, I said we made 80 grand on. Mm. This was one of said properties. Mm. And um, we could have taken a view at the time to serve notice on the tenants, do the refurb then, mm. put young professionals in. We didn't, you know, mm. this lady was living there, uh, actually at the time she was living with her son mm. and um, they were sharing the rent. So it was perfectly affordable. We mm. had assessed the situation, it was affordable. Mm. Mm. And, um, you know, we, we explained to her at the time, you know, we'll, we'll gradually put 50 pound increases just to bring it up to market rents. You know, is that fine? Yes, that's fine. Um, and uh, we've been growing at such a rate mm. that um, that one probably just slipped the net, really, mm. you know. Mm. Um, so that oh, I didn't realise that her son had moved out, mm. leaving her holding 100% of the rent to her mm. accountability. Mm. Um, and I didn't realise that that had probably led to her doing working everywhere our god sends mm. um meaning that there probably wasn't brain space yes. or energy or emotion to actually stay on top of things yeah. you know is my view okay and of course none of that was explained in the program no you just kind of dropped into this yeah knowing any of this yeah yeah okay so when you saw the property and when you'd been there for a bit you obviously decided that you were going to refurb it and there mm. was that scene with you and your father yeah where he wasn't quite as keen as you mm. but you decided that you thought it should be done and presumably mm. your, your will prevailed because the yeah. last the closing scenes of the the program were actually looking at the property the new kitchen mm. new bathroom new, mm. re nicely refurbished yeah so what was the story there and how did you get it done so quick uh, that's a good question <laughs> really good question um, so I, because it's accurate, they, um, we had an extra week, essentially. We, uh, we, 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 yeah, we, 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 that's all the time we had. I've got a brilliant team of builders, mm. uh, a guy called Joe, Joe Cottington. Uh, he's amazing. His firm's mm. amazing. Mm. Um, and um, I, he's very loyal to us, me and my dad, it's, we're loyal to him. Mm. Um, and uh, he was already working on a job in South End for us at the time. Mm. Um, and I picked up the phone and said, Joe, are you able to drop tools in South End and start on a two bed flat in uh, Chadwell Heath? Mm. And um, how long will it take? Mm. And he said, yes, I can do that. It probably take me about two weeks. And I said, well, you've got one. You know, mm. uh, and then he uh, swore a bit, <laughs> and then he agreed to do it. Yes. I think you know because I think he understood. To, you know, it's as 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 there was an urgency there. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, he, from from seeing it on TV, he did a fantastic job. They're really good. Um, they um, because sometimes it comes up like, okay, who's who's selling the cheapest kitchen? Who, who who's the, who's the cheapest labour? Cheap, cheap, cheap. How can we get it on the cheap? Mm. Um, and actually, the speed we move at and the rate of growth and the with coupled with the size of our business, actually. We need a good job doing, uh, good quality, and we need it doing quick. Mm. You know, and we, we don't need to any snagging, and we don't need to have to go back and, mm. and find things wrong. Mm. Um, so uh, every single time, it's like it's bang on, you know. Mm. And so that's that's why we use him all the time. Okay. And was your dad okay about doing the refurb in the end? Um, he did have that concern. You know, will she look after it? Mm. Um, 
and that's a that's a valid concern. Mm. However, in my opinion, um, it just had to be done. You yes. know, um, for a start, the maintenance issues that were in there in that condition, mm. uh, they would have kept us busy uh, all the time. Yes. Um, also. Uh, from an ethical standpoint, there's, there's no way we were just going to boot her out on the street. Mm. So uh, the, it had to be done, get it nice, and, um, and then just trust Linda, you know, yes. just tr trust her to look after it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was one point where your dad was looking at the kitchen and he said something which really resonated to me because I've got my own portfolio of single let buy to lets. Yeah. And he kind of looked at, uh, I think it was like where the splashback was behind the, the sink in the kitchen and the grouting had gone. And he looked at it and he said something like, if somebody just called us, we could have spent six quid to fix it. Yeah. That. But as it is, we probably could have spent about 400 quid re replacing mm. these cabinets. Yeah. And I thought, I know that feeling so yeah. well. Yeah, I've yeah. been there, can resonate yeah. with that. I know that. Yeah, and I noticed from an, another one of the episodes, not my episode, another one, uh, there was uh, a bit of, you know, a, a bit of stuff in the gut, uh, in, in, in the roof, you know, yes. in the gutter. Yes, that's right. And that led to like a bloody great hole in, in the roof, right? Yes. You know, and so, yeah, these issues not getting reported, you know, a stitch in time saves nine, right? Yes. You know, um, but you are... Uh, and actually, that seemed to be running through that TV programme. The landlords, they're not bad people. None mm. of us are bad people. Mm. Um, from the, that's my perspective mm. from the mm. show. Mm. Um, and they, they're all, all just been uh, reliant on their tenants communicating mm. with mm. them. But tenants, for whatever reason, haven't come forward. Mm. And it's, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why did we not know about this? Yeah, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why were we not told? And so... And actually, I think, although there's sort of like, I feel like there's a, a, a left-ish slant to the TV show. And actually, you asked me about the media before. Mm, mm. Um, it's, you know, you've got the extremes, haven't you? You've got mm. the, the benefit tenants and all this, like, all this sort of stuff. And, but then you've got this other thing of, you know, landlords are just private landlords, you mm. know, are just neglectful people mm. who don't care, money hungry, mm. blah, 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 blah. Mm. And um, I don't think that show really showed that. Um, I think from from my point of view watching it, like some, some people might watch that and say, oh, these landlords, you know, they should do more to look after their tenants. Mm. I actually think it didn't always paint the tenants in the best of lights mm. because it made the tenants look like people who are dependent on mm. other people to mm. look after them, mm. you know, and actually um, that could be quite offensive to tenants. You know, yeah. I, yes, I, yes, I, you know yeah. I've been a tenant before mm. and actually, you know, to, to, uh, to be characterised as someone who needs to, to, be, to be looked after, mm. uh, that's quite disempowering, I think. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I don't want to make it sound like mm. it's all the tenants' fault, but as you say, in, in all of the instances in this particular series of programmes, the tenant hasn't notified the landlord mm. of the repairs. And on the other side of it, as a landlord, you don't necessarily want to be bothering your tenant trying to go around and inspect <coughs> because yeah. you have to obviously respect their privacy mm. and they have to be able to have quiet enjoyment of the property mm. is the legal term. Yeah. So it's quite a balance, isn't it? To yeah. To actually get that right. Well, from an inspection point of view, um, how it normally works is our young professional tenants, they'll phone us up right away with anything, you know, uh, a wobbly tap. Yes. And they'll be like, my tap's a bit wobbly, yes. right? And uh, then the builders go in, um, it's, it, Similar team of team of guys. We've got like a maintenance branch, um, whereas those other guys are more gut and refit. But the, you know that's that's the level of work they're capable of. Mm. You know, so um, and they will always report back to me. You know, mm. that, so say say somebody reports something, they will normally say, oh, it's this, this, and this. So mm. really, the checks, um, you know, the, the checks are there to to stay on top of the people who aren't reporting issues. Mm. That's what I've realised from this experience. You know, I've been maybe mm. too trust, trusting, thinking that everybody, you know, everybody's going to report everything it needs doing, mm. you know? Well, I was going to say, how has this changed the way that you do business? Has it changed the way you do business? Um, it's, 
I'm still operating the same way. You know, we, uh, this is my livelihood. You know, this is my business. I'm a 100% property. Mm. That's all I do. I, mm. I don't even do the DJing anymore. Mm. Uh, Dad doesn't do the uh, civil engineering. Um, and I'm sure, uh, knowing you, you do single lets, buy mm. to let, I'm sure, mm. sure you know that uh, people would have it like, you know, you, you, you make huge amounts of cash flow. Mm. Um, we, you, you, can, you do make money, mm. but you know, you need the right systems, the right processes, you need quite, probably, probably quite a few properties Indeed. to actually mm. get that um, get that income, mm. um, and then and then the tax changes happen, mm. and then suddenly you've got to uh, you know you, you you've got to work work through that, mm. and you've got to maybe devise a new strategy, mm. and so actually being a private landlord is pretty tough, I mm. think, mm. and I think the, uh, the 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 nation is dependent on private landlords. Mm. Uh, it's all very well and good to point the finger at private landlords. However, if there were adequate housing stock and there was an adequate amount of social housing or even uh, housing for uh, uh, individuals that could afford it but wasn't private, um, but it's not, it comes down to us. Mm. So, um, you know, we're, we're, I've, I've gone, I've ranted a bit. No, 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 um, I fully understand, I yeah, agree. Yeah. Um, so so I'm, still, I'm still operating the same, However, it's definitely made me more mindful of the ethical issues. Mm. And I've now got a sense of social responsibility mm. that I didn't have before the programme. Um, so actually, I, I did have it, you know, in, in some shapes or form. You know, like there's been times where, uh, for whatever reason, uh, we've needed to serve a Section 21, for example. And Which is to get possession of the property. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, you know, and um, because we've known that the tenant's quite in a quite a vulnerable position, we've actually paid out of our own pocket to move them on. Okay. You know, um, so we might pay three grand in, um, uh, you know, like deposits and a f a month, first month's rent, that sort of stuff, you know, and we'll, we'll do that because we see that as a sunk cost to mm. further our investments. Mm. We were behaving like that anyway. Mm. Um, I think the main difference here is if every landlord had a, an apportion mm. of this in their stock. Mm. So you might have your, you know, your, your, your real mm. top hot properties mm. that make you tons and tons of money. Mm. And then you might have a few which actually have got, you know, your, 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 your less cash flow mm. or whatever. Mm. But you know, as long as you know, well, that's actually part of my responsibility mm. as well. Mm. Um, then I think you get a solution where it works for everybody. Almost a bit like having affordable housing. Yeah. Having, having a landlord version. Absolutely. Mm. And have, have like an affordable housing policy within the, uh, the industry of mm. private landlords. Mm. So we, if we like, if you like, we, we take care of the, we take care of the issue because uh, the Guardian aren't going to do it. No. That guy who wrote that Guardian article, he's either not in property at all, which means that he doesn't know what he's talking about, or he is in property, which means he's a hypocrite, mm. is my opinion. Yeah, so there yeah. we are. Any politicians listening to this, there are things we can do, but work with us. Stop, mm. stop bashing us. Yeah. So in terms of the programme then, was it a positive experience looking back? Are you glad yeah. you did it? Oh yeah, you know. Has it changed your life? Um, has it changed my life? Um, well, what was positive about it? Right, why, okay. Why, why, are you, why are you glad you did it? Yeah, um, so I, I've, I'm fairly well known in the industry anyway, certainly in the pro pro progressive property community. Yes. Yes. I think uh, people have seen Mark Nicholson around and gone, oh, that's Mark, oh, there's his yellow car parked on our forecourt, can you ask him to move it, please? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had that a few times. Um, and so, uh, but um, actually now it's a case of, oh, okay, like, like from this interview, mm. people are knowing a little bit more about me rather yeah. than just, oh, that's that guy, he, he's mm. part of the community. Yes. That's really valuable. Mm. Um, I think actually people have now seen our, me at my worst, right? You know, mm. people have seen the underbelly, they've seen mm. warts and all of me mm. and my dad, Peter, mm. Mm. you know, and uh, I think there's an authenticity to that. Mm. Um, so the people who do know us and do business 
experience with us. Mm. Uh, they know that we're not perfect mm. and we are integral. Mm. And that's, so that's been, ha having that in our brand is really, really powerful. Mm. Um, also, it's very nice um, having people come up to you uh, in the street or in the pub mm. and saying, oh, you know, and I get it, I get it even now. You know, the right. programme is a few weeks back. Yes, yeah. You know, they, they, and they always, it's always a very positive response. Yes. They shake my hand and they say, oh, you came across really well. Yes. Thank you for what you did for your tenants. Um, these are normal people. These aren't property mm. investors. And they're mm. saying, you didn't need to do all of that and you mm. did, you mm. know, is their attitude. Mm. So, um, it's been a very, very valuable experience. And mm. actually watching the program myself, um, I, yeah, I, I think, it, I, I'll tell you what, it's bloody good telly. <laughs> it, if nothing else, it's not, it's not boring. Yeah. You know, and that was my, con one of my concerns was, you know, I didn't want to, uh, if I was going to do it, I wanted it to be interesting. It you was know. certainly interesting. I have to say, I thought you came across very well. Mm. I think you came out Thank of it you. very well. I remember as a kid watching Doctor Who, mm. and there's a classic thing about watching hiding behind the settee because it was so scary. <laughs> and it felt a bit that way because I said to my wife when I knew you were going to be on it, I was thinking, why, why is he doing this? You know, what's going to happen? Mm. Can, yeah. anything, can anything good come from this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once yeah. the media have sort of sliced and diced the tape, and mm. but actually, no, you did. I think you and your dad mm. came out of it fine. So, yeah. So that was really good. And I've got to say credit to the team as well because. Um, I don't think, of course they edited it, and when I watched that first uh, five minutes, I did think, oh, that guy in the yellow car is a bit of a tool, you know, mm. um, meaning me, of course, mm. you know, and I, it's funny, really, because there was a point from an aspiration point of view, I, you know, um, I, you know, I, 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 sometimes, I don't know if you agree with this, but in, in uh, the property community, you feel that there's like a status thing where you might, you know, it's all about, you know, uh, what car you've got mm. or, mm. you know, I know Rob's into his watches. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm wearing a G-Shock today. Mm. You know, uh, there was a point where I was going to get a, a Rolex, you know. Mm. Um, actually, I'm, I probably will get a Rolex because mm. they're a good investment. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, I won't be buying it just for the bling mm. because actually for me personally the guy in the first five minutes the guy who's talking about how many properties he's got and driving around in his yellow car uh, i'm not that keen on that guy right it, it is me um that program really held the mirror up okay you know and the guy who's actually getting a bit overwhelmed in the middle yes. and uh and getting humbled uh that's the guy i like that's, that's, oh, you know, even yes. now thinking about it makes right. sense. Yeah, that's, that's the guy I, I want to be, you know, okay. the guy who's actually a decent guy, you know. Okay, so how, how are you keeping in touch with that guy? Um, I think it helps talking about um, what we can do as a community to offer social responsibility um, and if everybody did that, then I think the world would be a better place. Mm. And I think we'd end up uh, being stronger for it, actually, probably. Um, how else do I do that? Um, in my business relationships, you know, not being worried about being uh, a bit vulnerable. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, like emotionally, you mm. know, and um, not always being so conscious about looking good. Hmm. And having like, um, you know, like sometimes when you're presenting, for example, you know, it's, uh, it's about, um, you know, uh, this is how successful I am. Uh, this is how you do it. I'm, I'm per let's summarize. I'm perfect. Uh, uh, there could be a temptation, or speaking from my own example, there could be a temptation to stand on the stage and present to people, I'm hmm. perfect. Hmm. And actually, uh, that... I don't think now, I don't think um, people relate to that. No. Um, the guy sitting in the audience, he'll think, well, good for you, but mm. I'm, I'm a little old me, you know, I'm not capable, mm. I'm scared mm. actually, mm. you know. Mm. And to see, you know what, it's bloody hard work being a property investor sometimes, mm. you know, and it can, it can drive you to tears at moments, you know. But, oh my God, it's worth it. Yes. You know, like it's, it, it owns me, you know, I, I, I serve property, really. That's how I live my life these days. Right. It's yeah. an interesting way of looking at it. Mm. Now, a couple of, something which you've mentioned a couple of times uh, this afternoon 
is the tax changes. Mm. So the tax changes, I'm assuming you're talking about the changes to the amount of mortgage interest which we can offset against yeah. our rent, which over the next few years is going to be phased out until the point where we can't offset any mm. mortgage interest against our rent. Mm. Is this a particular concern for you? Uh, not anymore. Um, and by the way, um, uh, if my dad was here, he'd be giving, he'd be able to articulate this a lot better than I. Um, it's not the side that I cover okay. within our business, and I do know about the issues, and I do know they're a concern. Uh, we have incorporated uh, a big chunk of our. We buy everything now in a limited company. Okay. Starters, um, and the personal portfolio, a significant chunk of it, we have now incorporated. Okay. Um, we actually um, got. Uh, we we actually spoke to Progressive, and they pointed us in the direction of the right people. Oh, good. You know, okay. so we we are actually it's thanks to Progressive that we're speaking to the right people about that and the right power team, and um, we were in a position. And I've spoken about this on stage uh, with Paul Paul Smith before. Mm, mm. Um, we were in a position where we were able to incorporate 18 uh, of our own personal portfolio mm. into a limited co company, and um, we were able to, with HMRC clearance, I might add, yes. mitigate all of the corporation tax and all of the stamp duty, mm. uh, and legitimately, mm. um, and uh, we saved over half a million pounds in tax. Wow. And uh, thanks to the advice through Progressive, we saved about 70, 80 grand in fees as well. Wow. So uh, we're now in a situation where, um, you know, we're, we, we're, we're, we're operating as a limited company. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, we refinanced that with Metro Bank yeah. and we were able to pull out about half a million pounds as well from the right. portfolio. Wow. Yeah. So is that interesting? Because what could have been seen as being a problem coming down the line has actually been somewhat beneficial. Well, that's property in a nutshell. Maybe that's business in a nutshell. Maybe mm. that's life in a nutshell. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, like it's, um, uh, uh, yeah, but like, what is it, crisis? There's a Chinese symbol and it means like danger and opportunity, I think okay. it is, right? Um, I, I hope that's accurate, mm. uh, but something like that, right? Um, and any, all the time, ever since I've been in property, there's, there's been, there, it's been shape-shifting the whole mm. time. Mm. New legislation, new rules, new regs, uh, changes in the market, changes in this, changes in that. And it's really about adapting, mm. you know, the, um, the people who, and there's a lot of people with property investment or being a landlord or whatever you want to call it, a lot of people out there kind of have a go at it, like what dad used to do. Mm. And it's kind of like, okay, well, I think I can do this. Maybe they they lived in a place and mm. they moved out mm. and now they rent the place mm. they lived in. And, you know, it's not a hobby. Mm. It shouldn't be a hobby for anybody. Yeah. You know, you, hold, you pay for your hobbies where your business pays you. Yes. And uh, people who treat being a landlord like it's a hobby, A, when changes do happen, they're the ones who will go out the marketplace. And B, that's no service to your tenants. Mm. You know, if you're having a dabble at it mm. and you've got Lindas in your property, yes. then, you know, then, then the Guardian guy's right. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. Excellent point. And I was going to say, and this is really great for anybody who's just about to start out. Mm. Knowing what you know now, what would you say to somebody who's just about to start in property? Right, I would say um, it doesn't happen overnight. I'd say, you know, if you're looking for, if you're looking for like a get rich quick scheme, it's not one. Mm. Um, if you are doing it because you're inherently lazy and you don't want to work for the rest of your life, then you're not going to have the, uh, the inspiration mm. to actually get the thing off the ground mm. because having a, having a business is like, I'm, I'm, I'm I haven't got kids, mm. but my my business is my baby, yes. you know, and it, it needs nurturing, you know, mm. and it does, and it, and, it, and it you know, it does mean that you you lose a bit of sleep. Yeah. Um, it do it properly, be patient with it, commit to it, and most importantly, um, get educated. Mm. You know, really do make sure because it's going to cost you in mistakes what you would have paid for education. 
yes. you know. Um, so, and also don't reinvent the wheel. You know, there's no need to learn it all from scratch by yourself. Mm. There's other people out there who are experts and you can just learn from what they've learned, yeah. you know, and, uh, and just have trust. I personally believe it's one, if not the best, it's one of the best investment strategies, uh, one of the best businesses and industries you can be in. Mm. You know, um, like the term landlord was because they were the people who owned the land, right? Yes. You know, they were the kings and they were the lords, you mm. know, and they were the, and, uh, and they got wealthy from it. Mm. And let's be honest, you know, the good property investors do get wealthy from it. Mm. You know, it is, like I said in the program, I think it's the, what, the best, and they say safe as houses yes, as well, exactly. don't they? Exactly. You know, yeah. bricks, and mortar. bricks and mortar. You know, so it's, it's, it's a safe investment if you do it right, yeah. you know? Yeah. Brilliant. Mark, we're almost at the end of our time now. Okay. It's been great chatting to you. Mm. Now, you mentioned earlier that you do some consultancy with your dad, mm -hmm. and obviously you've got your service <coughs> departments. If anybody who's listening to this wants to get in touch with you, Mm -hmm. How can they get in touch? Can they get in touch yeah, with you? Is that can, okay? Yeah, they can get in touch with me. And um, when I did the, uh, the program, oh my God, like pff, torrents and torrents really? of stuff coming yeah. in. And uh, yeah. Good, good stuff, I hope. Yeah, all really good. But, yeah. you know, trying, and I, I, I made it my mission to re respond to everybody wow. because I think okay. if they're going to acknowledge me, I wanted to acknowledge that. Sure. And so that was like a day's work, literally just, yes. just saying thank you to people, which is yeah. pretty amazing, actually. Um, and uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a website, uh, Nicholson Property, www.nicholsonproperty.co.uk. Uh, uh, you can find us on there. Um, so just to be clear, that's Nicholson, N-I-C-H-O-L-S-O-N. Yeah. Nicholson Property, all one word. All one word. Dot co. Dot co dot UK. Okay. Um, I'm tempted to give out my mobile number. I'm not well, going to do that. don't want to do that. No, no. 10,000 people this yeah, year. Yeah, I know. Oh, right. Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, what I will say, though, is I'm in the community. I'm yeah. in the progressive property community. Yeah. Um, and I'm at four and a half thousand friends, so I'm not quite capped out at 5K yet. Um, and, um, you know, if you are part of the community, and we've got um, a, a certain amount of mutual friends, which we will have if you're mm. part of the community, mm. Mm. then I'm more than happy to, to be friends with you on Facebook and you can message me personally and I will always take time to get back to everybody. Fantastic. So look for Mark, which is M-A-R-C. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Nicholson. Find yeah. him on Facebook and befriend him. Yeah. You've got a few hundred left that you can accept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll find you there. So, so go to the Progressive Property uh, Community and we'll find Mark. Mm. Brilliant. Mark, thank you ever so much for coming in. Yeah, you're very, very welcome. To, to speak to us today. Yeah. And I've been Peter Jones. This has been the Progressive Property Podcast. And if you want to get in touch, if you have any ideas for future podcasts, message me or get in touch through the Progressive Property Facebook group. And if it looks like a good subject that's going to help everybody, we may well do it as a podcast. Until then, here's to successful property investing.